with this class is that we take some of the principles of Pilates and the exercises we do on the floor, we apply those principles to standing, we push a little bit harder, and hopefully it feels like a different kind of conditioning, but very related to all of the Pilates mat work we do in other classes. So we're gonna start with just um, getting our upper body moving. So if you take your legs wider apart, bend your knees a little, and just start to let your arms swing a little side to side. We're trying to mobilize the upper body. You can feel as your arms swing side to side that fascially, your soft tissue is kind of pulling you back and forth. You can add a little rotation so you're looking in the direction of your arms. This would be a good thing to do in the middle of your work day, get your arms moving a little bit, get your upper body moving. If like something is tight down here, it's gonna limit your range in your arm, if that makes any sense. So you're trying to just feel the whole chain swing. And then you'll turn your legs side to side and you're gonna swing your arms back to front. You can push off the back leg, swinging through the arms, just getting everything moving. And switch which leg is forward or turn around. Swinging through the arms, push pull through the legs. And then take your arms, hug across your upper body, open your arms out to the side and then take that into a little, like you'll feel your legs if they bounce, it'll kind of swing your arms open. So with fascial training, we're trying to not be so muscular and think more about just letting things move. And you'll find that there's an elastic recoil that brings you back without having to think about it. You can play around with the diagonals of the arms. Swinging. If you find places that are tighter, then indulge in them a little bit more. And just a couple more here. The more you bend your knees and bounce, the more you're going to get your heart rate up as well, which we're always trying to do that in a warm up is get our circulation going, oxygenate our blood, all that good stuff. And then start to let yourself relax. And then bend your knees and rock your hips a little side to side. So you're mobilizing your pelvis uh, right to left. And then I want you to play around with the positioning of your feet. So angling both feet to one side, you're still rocking your hips right to left. You'll notice there might be part of your hips or the outer leg that feel tight. That's why we're doing this. Letting yourself swing a little side to side. Try the other stance. Little side to side swinging of the hips and the pelvis. So try not to go into this pelvis front to back thing. That would be like if you're going this way. So that's kind of why I was saying right to left is I'd love your feet to be offset and your pelvis still be going right to left. Natalia, that's kind of front back. Can you go side to side? We're trying to open up the lateral side of the leg and it is hard, it's a kind of uh, tight position to feel like you can move very big. Something like that, I'll take it. And then come back to the center, turn your legs out, swing your pelvis side to side, you can let your hips be lower, they can be higher. Doesn't look really cool, but that's okay. Getting some movement going through the lower body. And then coming back to the center, bring your feet a little closer together. And we're gonna bring our hands behind the head. Once your hands are behind the head, feel like you're lifting up taller to the ceiling and then round your upper body forward, press back up. So it's like if you were doing an ab prep and then you're gonna side bend to one side and push the floor away, come back up, side bend the other way. Nice. And again, rounding forward, flexing through the upper spine and using your breath to help you move, pushing the floor away, side bending. Then we're gonna add our knees bending. So you go into a squat, rounding, like kind of like double leg stretch and bend the knees as you side bend and bend the knees as you side bend. Repeat again. Use your breath to help you as long as you're breathing, I'm happy. 
and side bending that looks awesome everyone and side bending and then rotate over one thigh bend your knees flex offset your hips a little to the opposite side so you should feel a stretch through the ql back of the lower back push the floor away rotate and flex up and over the other leg shift your hips a little off center push the floor away do that once more each way rounding over one leg Offset the hips slightly, push the floor away, lift back up. And over the other leg, offset the hips a little. Push yourself back up. Good, we're gonna be using the length of our mat today and doing some lunges. And we're gonna be going up and down into the floor and out of the floor. So first, starting with your back of your legs, kind of pushing the floor away. So you're getting taller, like you're trying to stretch all of your clothing out in the back of the body. And then continue to stretch your clothing out as you flex through your upper body, bringing your upper body towards the floor, looking through your knees, turn your head a little, like you're saying yes or no. Then take some weight into your hands, step one leg back and then the other and set your knees down like leg pull front prep. Hover the knees up, pushing the floor away, staying long through the spine, you could balance a tray on your back and then set your knees back down. Do that again, fingers are really open, you're pushing through the floor, taking a few breaths here, setting it back down. And last time, hovering the knees off the floor. Nice. Staying there. Setting the knees down. Untuck your toes. Push yourself back into a shell stretch. Take a big breath back. Open up through your lower spine. You push into your hands. Think of stretching the kidneys back. That'll help. And then come back forward over the hands, uh, hands underneath the shoulders, knees under the hips. Reach the opposite arm and leg long and lift it up. And then just tap down and lift up a few times on that side. Keep pushing the floor away so you're not letting yourself sink around your shoulder. Lowering and lifting. Only lifting as high as you can keep your neutral alignment or that flat back position. Hold your arm and leg up, flex your foot, pull your toes towards your nose. Circle your leg around. Like you're trying to draw a circle on the wall behind you with your heel. Leg is really straight, reverse, circling around. And bringing that arm and leg back in. Other arm and leg reaches out, lift and tap down. As you're lifting and lowering, trying to keep long through the torso. Pushing the floor away the whole time trying to keep the hips and the shoulders from uh, losing their levelness. Last one, hold the arm and leg up, flex the foot, circle the leg. And reverse. And bring your hand and leg back in and down. Then I want you to protract and retract. So let yourself sink down between your shoulder blades then push the floor away. Do that a couple times. So you're letting yourself sink down, pushing the floor away to lift back up. You can choose to continue to do that here, or you could hover your knees off the ground and do a few with the knees hovered. Two more. Pike your hips up like kind of like a messy downward dog. You don't have to get your heels down. And then bend your knees and lower yourself back down to that leg pull front prep position. Push the floor away, lift your hips up like a pike. Bend your knees, lower back down. Twice more, lift your hips up, open up the back of the legs. Transfer your weight back forward. And last one. We're gonna walk our hands towards our feet. Drop the back of the pelvis, push the floor away to roll all the way back up to standing. Step one foot forward so the open hip is towards the camera. Lift and lower the back heel by doing this little bounce. It's not a big motion, 
You're just kind of going down, up, down, up, down, up. Yeah. Push, pull. So you're trying to keep the bounce happening from mostly the front hip and that Achilles lower leg. And then keep the heel down and you're gonna push the floor away, bend, pushing the heel up, press the foot back down. Do that a couple of times. Let's bring the arms forward, push and pull. So you're not just popping your foot up and down, but I want you to try to push, kind of fan the foot open, stretch through the back leg, fan the foot open, stretch through the back leg. Stay the same in the front leg. So some of you are coming up and down, stay the same through the front leg so your lunge doesn't change and fan the foot open, press it back down. Two more and leave the back heel down once it's there. You're gonna do a little more protraction, retraction. One arm is protracting, the other is retracting our shoulder blade. And that's gonna take you into a little bit of rotation. Has that kind of bounce feeling again. Push, pull. You can bend the elbow a little bit as you retract, it might help you. And then we're gonna bend the elbow, same as the back leg. So whichever one is open and sweep across, then reverse, open across that front leg, sweep across. So you're still doing protraction and retraction. Shoulder blades are gliding on the back of the ribs. Opening, press, open, press. Take your eyes with you. See something all the way across the room and then across the horizon. Two more. Then same arm as front leg only is gonna open four times. Sweep across, open, sweep across. So the other fingertips reaching away from the back fingertips. And then take your arm overhead, round your upper body, bringing your hands to your knees and then stack back up. It'll be a little bit more dynamic than that. So you round, come up, bend your elbows, sweep back, uh, sorry, round and come up. Balance becomes part of the challenge here. Open, up and over. Stack up, open, up and over, stack up, open, up and over. One more time, open, up to go over and back up. Stay here with this big elongated press position, lunge position, reach your arms forward, lift the back heel, bend and press yourself up. So you're trying to lower your knee towards the floor, push yourself back up. You wanted this to be harder. You could add some weights to this. Down and up. And stay down there. Push the back heel towards down and then lift it back up. So it's not gonna probably go all the way to straight and that's okay. Just kind of, again, fanning the heel, reaching the back heel away from the front knee. Three. Two, good Maxine. And one, step that foot forward and we step the other leg back in our lunge. Find that lunge with the back heel down in the start, back leg straight, arms are reaching forward and just start with that little bounce. So you're letting the back heel go down, up, down, up, down, up. All 10 toes are pointed forward can let your arms flop around actually for this part. Finding your little bounce. The more elasticity and bounce we have in our body, the more athletic we can be. And hold that back heel down, reach the arms forward. And then just start with that fanning of the foot open and then reaching the heel back down. Fan the foot open. Press down. Torso isn't moving. Staying the same height off the ground the whole time.
Couple more. And last one, drop that back heel. Then the same arm as the front leg, you rotate open, sweep across. So the front arm is protracting, back arm is retracting. Sweep and sweep. Take your eyes with you. So you're challenging your stability. Looking around, look all the way across the horizontal. One more each way. And then the same arm as the front leg is gonna go several times, same arm. Push through the back heel. Gonna keep that back knee stretched really open. Then go up and over the top, round your upper back, stack back up. Reach up and over. It should feel like you can create a little traction through your back up to go over i feel it all the way down into my lower back stretching open a um, couple more and last one and then finding your elongated position again if you're having trouble balancing on any given day, just come off the mat. The mat's harder to balance on. Bend your back leg, pushing the floor away, down and up, feeling like you're sitting on an escalator with this front hip and it's just pushing you back up. Pressing forward and up, feeling most of your weight is in that front leg. Four more. And last one. And then we're gonna step that leg forward. Nod your chin, round down again. Bend your knees this time. As you straighten your legs, feel like you're trying to almost somersault forward. So you're rounding further. And your head comes towards your knees more as you open the back of your legs. And one more time, kind of like an upside down rollover. And then we're gonna step one foot back and then the other into that quadruped position again. From here, you can set your knees down. We're gonna uh, hover one leg up, round your back as you pull your knee in, reach out to one long line, try to stay as centered as possible. Round to pull in, reach out. Round to pull in. And one more round to pull in and reach back out, bring that leg in. Bend the other leg underneath you, cat back, straight back. Cat back, straight back. Rounding to pull in, one more time. And then bringing that leg down, go back to the first leg, cat back to pull in, reach out to one long line, either stick with that version or if you wanna add a little, Try to go into a little bit of upper back extension by bending the back knee, lifting the sternum, bend the elbows, long neutral, cap back, neutral, extend, neutral, cap back, neutral, extend, neutral, one more, cat back, neutral, extend, bring your leg back in, other side, neutral, and we round in, pulling the knee underneath you. Reach out, extend the spine, neutral. Rounding in two, and extend. And rounding in three, extend. And last one, rounding in four, and extend. Stretch the leg out, bring it back in. Push yourself back into a little shell stretch and then you're gonna come to laying on your stomach. So laying all the way down. Let's have the legs turned out towards the corners of the mat. You can do whatever you like with your hands for the moment. Just bend one knee like you're gonna kick yourself in the opposite glute or butt. That's what the lower body's gonna do. 
Then we're gonna add a one arm breast stroke to this. So if you use your hand that stays down on the floor, one hand comes up off the floor, reaches forward, circle around and you're gonna turn and look toward, turn your thumb up towards the ceiling and then set it back down. So you lift up, opposite arm, reach around like you're trying to touch the back of the other thigh. Lift up, sweep around. That's right. Use the hand that's on the floor. You're pushing with the hand on the floor. It actually is a little easier to do once we add the lower body. So you're gonna lift up, reach forward, try to touch the other foot and reach forward, try to touch the other foot. Good. Reach. Nice Genevieve. And lift and try to pick up the speed a little bit. Nice. Open. One more each side. And last one. Both legs are going to come to parallel. And knees are pointed down. You're going to hover your upper body off the floor, including your arms. Reach your arms overhead. Circle your arms around and turn your thumbs up for this version of breaststroke. So you lower down, you reach out super person, circle around. So we're targeting the upper body. Feel like you're trying to curve your upper body like the front of a ski. Diving forward, circle around left. Diving forward, circle around left. Two more. Set your hands down. Push yourself back into a shell stretch, stretching through your lower back. Press the lower back open, open, open. And come back to that quadruped position. We're either going to repeat that movement of the leg we were just doing, the cat back to neutral, or you're gonna repeat it with your knees hovering off the ground. I'm gonna cue it a little faster for those of you who are hovering off the ground. So hover your knees up, one knee pulls under, cat back, neutral, cat back, neutral, cat back, neutral, number four, switch legs, cat back, extend a neutral, cat back, extend a neutral, three and four, set the leg down, two second break, and then we add the extension if that's appropriate today. Hover up, cat back. Neutral, extend, neutral, cat back. Neutral, extend. We'll take a break between the two sides with this one. Stay as low as possible. And set your knees down, sit back. Two second break. Last side, hover the knees up, knee comes under, reach out, extend. Extend, neutral, two, and last one, round. And bring your leg in, pike your hips up, you can drop your heels down, and then start to walk your hands towards your feet. Bend your knees wherever necessary, and start to roll back up to standing. Once you're back standing, we're gonna to turn to face the front. Wide position, about as wide as the outer hips. If you were on the reformer, it'd be like your footwork on the reformer. Just go down and up a few times into a squat. When you're going down into your squat, your hips, knees, and ankles, they all need to change at the same time. I don't want the knees to go first and then the hips. It's all the same. The torso is gonna to mirror the angle of the shins. So I'm not here with my torso and on this diagonal with my shins, I've got to kind of mirror them. If I want to go lower, I have to flex my hips more. Often there's tightness in the lower legs. So if you feel like you don't have enough range, um, if you have, I just have these weights nearby, but if you have a book or something, you could put your heels on, you'd be able to increase the range of motion through the hips and go a lot lower because you don't have to deal with the limited range of motion through the lower leg. Okay, so from there, we're gonna stay down in our squat, peel one heel off the floor, put it back down. Heel, lower it down. 
Hands on hips is easier, or to the side a little harder, overhead even harder. Lift, put it down. Lift, put it down. Lift and down. And then reciprocal. So one then the other, both are moving at the same time. Nice, Ava. Yeah, get those heels going, 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 going. Then the last version is we push the floor away and lower back down. So you're lifting the whole shape from that press of the feet. Last one, push yourself all the way back up to standing, shake out whatever you need to shake out. We're gonna go back to where we started with the hands behind the head. Flex your upper body forward over your legs, rounding through your spine. Push the floor away. Side bend, bending the knees, pushing the floor away. Side bend, push the floor away. Rotate over one thigh, offset the hips to the opposite side. Press yourself back up one more and offset your hips and then come all the way back up. So from here, we're gonna do a standing abdominal exercise. So if you imagine almost like the center of your flexion is right at the sternum or like somebody threw a ball at your sternum and it flexed you forward. That's the motion. Just like if you were laying on your back and you were flexing up with a little bit of force. That's what we're starting with here. It doesn't feel as hard. Obviously there's a relationship with gravity that's happening here as well. And then I want you to push through one leg as you come up, lift the other leg, step down. Obviously be careful you don't hit your knee to your face. As much as you can, try not to like step way side to side. You're staying as much as you can underneath yourself. Standing leg is straight-ish, can have a little bend in it. And then we're going to enhance this by bending both legs, which means your knee will be able to come a lot closer to your face. So aim more for your armpit, no accidents here. Stand all the way up in between each one. Stand up, flex, stand up, flex. Some of you are just hunched over the whole time. Get on up there. Stand and look forward. Stand and look forward. Two more. And then take your arms, let your arms swing. Swing. We're gonna add the swing of the arms. You'll have even more momentum for your upper body. Watch your face. Think of like if you had a ball in your hands and you were throwing the ball straight forward. Couple more. Last one, finish up even. And then we're going back into our squats, feet wide and down and pressing back up. Three, parallel through the legs. So you want your feet a little wider than the widest part of your hips. Staying down, lift one foot, put it down. Lift the other foot, put it down. Hips are staying level. And last set, reciprocal for eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Push the whole shape away from the floor, lower the heels. Push the whole shape away, lower. Three, 
Knees aren't changing, hips aren't changing. Four, just the ankles. Five. Last one. And stand all the way back up. Turn so you have mat behind you. Step one foot back in your lunge. This time, step your foot back further so your heel can be lifted. You're gonna lower your hands to the floor. And then I want you to push the back hip open, then scoop your abs and lift up. Push the back hip open, scoop and lift up. You're not trying to straighten the front leg necessarily. It's more about that back hip opening. You know the reformer work, it's like your single thigh stretch. So don't straighten the front leg, stay low, stay low. Yeah, I still see lots of uh, triangles here, but that's okay. Then put the back knee down, untuck your foot, come up into a lunge on the front leg, reach the same arm as the front leg forward and open, go up and over, round your back, scoop your belly back. You should feel a psoas, hip flexor stretch. So lunge a little further, open, up and over, scoop. We did this standing, very similar. Much deeper feeling though, up and over. You have to allow the pelvis to move because we're trying to address hip flexor tightness. So press your hips forward here, Genevieve one. Yeah, there. And then shift your weight back a little as your hand goes back. Then think of up and over like a picket fence. Yes, reach forward, up and over. Last time, lunge up and over, set your hands down, step that foot forward, roll back up to standing, reach the other leg back, big lunge, hands come to the floor, push your hips open, lift up a little. Mostly it's about opening that back hip and it should feel like you're rounding your lower back a little bit as you try to lift the hip away from the floor. So you're never just collapsing into the front of the hip. Down a little. And up, two more. And last one. And set your knee down. Find that lunge with your hands on your knee. Front arm is gonna reach, same arm as front leg is gonna reach forward, around. Then it goes up and over. Then start to lean further forward. Shift a little back, up and over the picket fence. Yeah. Up and over and forward, back, up and over, rounding. Trying to find a dynamic type of stretch or lengthening here. One more. Reaching your hands back to the outside of the foot, step that foot forward, roll up to standing. Nod your chin, roll back down through your spine. Take your hands to the floor, step one foot back into a plank. And then the other, if you wanna set your knees down, you can. Find your long line, your full plank. Hold this position, lengthening through the upper body. See if you can flex your low spine, like round your belly away from the floor, round your low spine, then lengthen back to neutral. Round your low spine, it should feel incredibly uh, effective for strengthening abdominals. Rounding through the low spine, lengthen to neutral. Round the low spine, scoop up. And last one, shift your weight back, stretch into your shell stretch. And then come to sitting facing the side. We're gonna put our hand down. Sorry, no, your forearm down. And you're gonna start with your feet just on top of each other like you're doing clams because that is what you're gonna start with is the clam here. Trying to push the floor away the whole time. Shouldn't feel very hard. Should feel like a, you know, a little breather. Pushing up and down. Last 
Last two like this. And last one. Rotate this hand turned out, the one that's on the floor, so it's a little bit on the diagonal. You're gonna push your hips up, take your top arm to the ceiling, rotate your torso to do a push up through that one arm, lift back up to the ceiling, set your hips down. Do that a few times if you need to move back on your mat so your knees stay on the mat, feel free. So hips go up, you rotate, push up to the ceiling, lower down, adjust anything that wiggled. And lift, rotate, push up. And lift up. And I feel like as I do this, if my if I'm in this like half plank position that my knees feel like they move eventually away from my arms. So you have to keep kind of adjusting how close you are. Last time, lift up, rotate, push up and set it back down. Set the top foot on the floor in front of you. Come up onto your hand. Take the top hand up to, uh, let's start with it here. So simple, go up and over into a side bend. Set it, your hip back down. Then you're gonna try to rotate backwards, set your other hand down and lift the leg out from underneath. So you're kicking it forward. So you're going back and forth. It gets easier once you add a little bit of speed. We're gonna make this harder at some point in the near future. But at this point, it's just getting you moving. So we're gonna add, rotate up and over, set this hand down, sneak that leg back. So you're kind of in a crawl position. One leg is closer to you than the other. Set your hips back down, tuck the leg, hand goes back, kick to the ceiling. So you kind of jump out into this crawl or stick with what we were doing before. And then the trick is trying to get your feet to be as far away from each other as possible. So the closer you get this knee to the armpit, the better. Just do two more. It's kind of fun to flip around on the mat a few times. And one last time. And coming back, swing your legs around to the other side, forearm down, clam position, pressing your knees up knee up, lifting the bottom ribs so you're as neutral as possible. Trying to keep the hips from tipping backwards as you press the knee up. Nice. And last one. And turn the bottom hand out. Reach the other arm up to the ceiling. Push the hips up, rotate, do your little push up back to the ceiling, set your hips down. And press up. So we're always kind of playing around with challenging the, the weight of the body, using the weight of the body to challenge our limbs and our core. So you're starting to begin to build kind of a one arm position through that bent elbow and then the push up through the other arm. Last time, lift up, rotate, push up, back and down. Come up onto your hand, bottom, top foot sits down. Press yourself up into the side bend. Set your hips back down, put your hand on the floor, kick up to the ceiling. Starts kind of simple. Just trying to figure out how to not get all tangled up. And up and over, biggest side bend you can make. And up and over. If you can add up and over, sneaking that foot out and turning your body to face the floor, Pivot back and kick up to the ceiling. Pivot. 
one side might be harder to organize. I'm finding that to be true. That would be pretty normal. Just do two more. And last one. Yeah, awesome. So we'll keep building on this stuff. Come back onto your hands and knees and press your hips up to kneeling. If you need to do the standing, you could do the standing. Feel like you pull up really tall through the pelvis. Reach one arm down the back of your thigh and the other arm up. And you can go into a little bit of extension like you're sending your pelvis forward. Come back to vertical, switch arms. Lift up, you can look towards it if that helps. Trying to use your arm that's lifting up to help liberate you out of your lower back. This is the beginning of like a back bend. Up and over, up and over. One more each side. Putting the hands back down on the floor. Bring your legs back together. Leg pull front prep. Hover your knees off the ground. And then you're gonna lift your hips just a little bit. And I want you to feel this kind of springy place where your butt is kind of high. It's not like leg pull front prep anymore. And then I want you to jump and land in place with your feet and knees pointed to one side. Jump back to the center, rotate. Center, rotate, center, kind of like your obliques, only upside down. Let me watch. And rotate, center, awesome. Lower is harder. So instead of using your leg power so much to get yourself so high off the ground, stay lower. Yeah. Maxine, see if you shift your weight forward a little through your arms so you're less in a downward dog. If it gives you a little more spring, yeah, that looks springier. Set your feet down, shift back, do a little shell stretch, whatever you need. So we're gonna do some abdominal exercises, kind of upside down. So that was our obliques. Then we're gonna come back up into that pouncy position. If it's not working for you to be like this, you can always do these exercises laying on your back like you know. So hover yourself up, find that bouncy place, step your feet forward to the outside of your hands, jump back. Kind of like double leg stretch. Use your breath to help you. Stay as low as you can. Four more if you can. You're staying in the center if you can. So I know it's hard to see, but I'm trying to land like this, like froggy style. And then I jump back and my feet are together. Yes. And then I think it's just about keeping the butt low and I know we're all tired. So then sit down for a second. <laughs> Roll down to laying on your back. Bring your legs into your chest. Circle your legs around one way. Circle your legs around the other way. Reach your legs up to the ceiling. Take your hands to the outside of the knees. Flex your upper body up. One leg goes towards you, one goes away. Little scissor pulse, pulse switch. If you want it to be harder, hover the arms by the side without bouncing around. And then bend the legs back in, rock a little side to side, rest for two seconds. And then reach the legs back up to the ceiling, take your hands to the outside of the legs like you're gonna do scissors again. And what I want you to do is kind of uh, take it into a bicycling motion. So one leg goes away from you and you split the legs apart, bend the bottom leg, split the legs apart, bend the bottom leg like you're trying to pull sand in towards your butt with your foot. Whew. 
just changes the range of motion. We get a little bit more opening through the hips. And then coming back in, lower all the way back down. Roll over onto your hands and knees. You could do one more set of scissors if you like, uh, or you're gonna do this little puma pounce thing with me here. So in that springy position, gotta find some elasticity through the joints like there are springs. Bend one leg in towards your chest, straighten the legs and reach up to the ceiling. Bend in, cat, lift up. Now, some of you might remember doing this when you were a kid and kind of going into a handstand this way. Just don't go that high. So you're gonna do a little jump if you can. Like single leg stretch, only way harder. And then switch legs, cat back in, kick it up. You don't have to do the jump if it's not appropriate. And last one, and set it back down. And do a stretch, either with your hands behind you, arms can be forward, whatever feels good to you. And then we're going to come back to our hands and knees. Find your leg pull front prep position. Pike your hips all the way up like downward dog and drop your heels. Bend your knees, come back forward. Lift up, come back forward like we did at the beginning. Lift up and come forward one more time. Lift up, walk your hands towards your feet, dropping the back of the pelvis. When you're ready, feel like you stretch through the back of the leg to roll yourself back up. From here, we're gonna come to a squat position with the feet pretty close together, closer than they were before. Step out to a lunge to one side. Think of your hips staying level, so try not to get the hips too crooked. And then come in and step the other way. I find I usually step off the end of my mat, but depends on how long the mat is. I'm actually gonna come off of my mat and as you push and pull, try to get a little lower if you want it to be harder, arms out to the side or overhead. Staying low, like there's a ceiling right above you you're trying to not hit. And four more. Last one, come all the way back in. We're gonna step out into a lunge. We're gonna have the hands at the forehead, torso's vertical now. Rotate towards the straight leg, step back in. Rotate towards the straight leg, step back in. If you wanna instead just touch the foot as you come back in or hover it up. So vertical torso, still. So uh, it's different. What we were just doing was this low lunge where you're on a diagonal. Now you start vertical, you stay vertical, stay vertical. Yeah, it's just different work through the torso, through all of your soft tissue. And try to add the rotation towards the straight leg. And you can find your balance as you come back in. If you're doing the balance, you probably wanna go the same direction a couple times. Find your balance. You can rotate across that leg as it hovers up. Rotate. Two more. If you're going side to side, keep going side to side. If you're doing one side, time to do the other. Rotate towards the straight leg, lift up and in. Sometimes weird things happen, just keep going not meant to be perfect, there's no such thing. Awesome, everyone. Try to rotate each direction. 
So this is more mobility than it is about strength, more about balance than about resistance, I'd say. Last one. And then we're gonna do that balance. You can stay facing towards me. Reach one foot forward, circle your ankle. Two, three, four, take your leg to the side. Oops, I forgot to go the other way. Four, three, two, one leg goes to the side. Try to stay vertical through the torso. Whatever is helpful with your hands. Leg goes back. You probably have to bend your knee in order to stay vertical and not hinge forward. Stay vertical. And that goes for not hiking the hip as well. So try to get the hip level. Other leg is gonna reach forward. Circle around. Two, three, four, reverse. Nice. Good, Gloria. Reach your leg to the side. Reverse. Leg goes back, stay vertical. Should feel like some work in that standing hip. Reverse. Then either repeat again or do this in a hinge. So the standing leg is bent, your torso is on a hinge, your leg can be whatever height you can hold it at. Four, three, two, one, reverse. Four, three, two, one, leg goes to the side. You're trying to get as close to a horizontal as you can. The standing leg is bent. I know it's hard to tell, but bend the standing leg. Circle, two, three, four, reverse, two, three, four. Sweep your leg back and as far towards airplane as possible. Circle, reverse. And set that foot down. Other leg, hinging through the torso, leg goes forward, whatever height you can hold. Arms, however they help you. Reverse four, three, two, and one. Leg goes to the side. Try to take your torso into an airplane, kind of to the side. Two, three, four, reverse. Try to stay over if you can. Whew. And then sweep the leg back. Once the leg goes back, arms are out to the side, circle. Reverse, four, three, two, and one. Stepping back down. And roll down through your spine one last time. Step one foot back and then the other into a plank. You can set your knees down if you need to but you won't be able to rotate from that position very easily. So legs straight, rotate and push the floor away, reach one arm up to the ceiling, put that arm down. And then start to go a little faster. If your knees are down, you kinda can do it, but you keep shifting, your body keeps shifting away from your hands. So you'll probably have to scoot them in. Once you're even, set your knees down, sit back towards your heels. Circle your wrists around, reverse it. And we go back to that same position one more time into our plank. You can bend one knee, pull the knee to the elbow, knee to elbow, knee to elbow. And as you pull your knee to the elbow, try to do a little bit of a side bend. So you're kind of bending towards the leg as it comes in, yes. Some of you, especially if I saw you this weekend sprinting up a giant hill in North Beach, you know who you are, then add a push-up to this. So you go down and up, down and up. Can be a lot bigger than mine. Let me watch. Awesome, push-up, Natalia. Down, up, bend your elbows. Yes, there we go. Awesome, Genevieve. That looks amazing, everybody. And then set your knees back down, sit back towards your heels and make your way back onto your feet. Walk your hands towards your feet, drop the back of the pelvis, roll yourself up to standing and you're all done. Awesome job. Yay, good job, everybody. <laughs>